Assalamu alaikum guys. Welcome back to our channel. Thank you for coming back. Make sure that you subscribe and click for notifications so you don't miss our videos. Today I'm here to talk about how to file the dreaded <laughs> I-130 petition for your spouse to come to the United States. I was going to wait on this, but there's so many of you guys who have gotten married in the last month. Congratulations, Mabruk. Um, I hope I said that right. But congratulations, uh, alhamdulillah, that you were able to get married. Actually, one of you couples had told me you got married in three days, which is unheard of in Morocco. So I am very excited that I was able to help with that process. It's really nothing for me. Um, I just really wanted to share this information with you guys because it's necessary. If, if you don't know what you're doing, when you get over there, it can be a giant headache. Uh, I can't imagine going over there and not knowing what I was doing. Um, so I'm really happy and grateful that you guys are watching our videos uh, to see the process and what you have to go through um, and that it's helped. Because <laughs> that was kind of the goal. That was the main goal was to be able to help people with this process because I, I have felt that um, a part of the groups that I had became part of, they were not very helpful. There's actually, which this is just my personal opinion, uh, it doesn't have to be yours, but the Moroccan visa journey and the U.S. Moroccan visa journey, I had joined those groups. I actually don't follow them anymore, but um, I felt like they weren't very helpful and people were retaining information that you guys need. I needed it. Uh, so I am here to kind of help with that uh, and eliminate that middleman uh, for whatever reason people feel like they need to hold on to information that we all need and it's frustrating to say the least uh it's really not necessary and yeah so any of this information you can find out online you don't actually need somebody for or uh anything like that you can also find all this information out online you don't need a group you don't need me even but <laughs> Um, since I do have the information, I do want to give it to you guys and present it that way. So a little bit of disclaimer, I have to say this every time, your process is not going to be the same as mine and my process is not going to be the same as yours, uh, which is also something that was a little discouraging being a part of the groups. You see people uh, getting approved way before you uh, are giving their opinions about your relationships, stuff like that. So. Again, you're welcome to join these groups. It has nothing to do with your opinion about the groups. Just my personal opinion, I really felt they were not very helpful. Um, and they led me to a very emotional state that I didn't want to be in anymore. So I deleted all of them. And <laughs> now I feel free from watching people, you know, go through the process quicker than me and Sophia. And, and that has been probably the hardest part which also this part is hard. So if you're just now getting married in Morocco and you come here, uh, just get prepared for this next step. Please, please, please enjoy your time together because this is going to be a very challenging time and a very time-consuming time. -consuming time. <laughs> uh, it's not easy waiting for someone to play God with your relationship. Um, so I just... I really need to put it out there that if you're together right now, please enjoy your time together because the next steps are not going to be easy if you plan to immigrate your spouse to the United States. Just want to put this out there. This is my two cents that some things that happen in Morocco that help you in Morocco will not help you in the United States. So it doesn't matter what class you come from, what your background is, your educational background. Etc. 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 Things that will work for you in Morocco are not going to work for you during this process. So, just wanted to say that because there's been a few people that have messaged me thinking that certain you can get around certain things with this process and you cannot. So just be prepared for that. Uh, we don't. Well, the immigration office does not work like that in the United States. You're not going to get around 
you know, with bribing or any of that kind of stuff. So with that being said, let me jump into uh, the process for uh, filing for your, filing a petition for your spouse to get to the United States. Okay, so I believe the easiest way to file the petition is online. That's the way we did it. Uh, you can, however, file it paper, old school, which I will uh, I will put those the information about that below in the description box um, because it's a little more lengthy. Uh, I have it here, but I will put this in the description box. Some of these things were given to me from other people, so which came from people in the group who like to call themselves veterans now for whatever reason. Again, I'm sorry. I'm really trying not to be <laughs> give my personal opinion about what I think of these people that run these groups. But um, all this information you can find out on your own. But I will also give the link to them, all this stuff that was given to me or provided to me over the time for this process. It, it's extremely helpful. Um, but again... You would have to go digging for it, so uh, it, it's just helpful to have it here on my channel. In the description box, you'll find all this information. So the way that you apply for um, your spouse online, it'll be the USCIS.gov webpage, and you will have to create an account, and from there is when it starts getting uh, time consuming <laughs> because you it'll look like this so when you update or I'm sorry when you upload your information there will be several things that you need to upload the first is obviously the I-130 form which is a 12 page document which I have the links for below you will also need the money order um, Actually, you don't need a money order for this. I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm reading off the one that you mail in, but the way that you pay online is different. But the filing fee is $535. So you want to be prepared with that. The form I-130A, which is the beneficiaries, supplemental beneficiaries information, you will need this. So this is something that you want to get when you are over there with them. I forgot to do this and had to jump through hoops to get him to sign it and send it back to me and all that stuff, which you can do if that happens. But to eliminate this while you're over there getting married, here's actually a couple things that you want or a few things that you need. You want him to him or her to sign the uh, I-130A, which is a six page document also linked below. I won't show you guys how they look. You can just click the links below. Um, they need to sign that page. And you will need a passport photo. Photo, sorry. <laughs> you will need a passport photo. The passport photo does have to have a white background, and it does have to have a certain dimensions, which I will showcase here. It does have to be that. I know you guys use a black. I mean, a blue background. So ours is white, and it costs a lot in America. So. It would be beneficial if you got these done over there before you get here. And also have them write something in the native language. Oh, I'm sorry, back to the passport photo. You want to have them write their name on the back. It doesn't matter if you do it or not, but it's just eliminating steps. And you want them to write something that is in their native language that looks like this. Because uh, they do ask for it. Now... When you're looking on the dashboard, it, it gives you links to certain things that you need to upload. And I was trying to record that, but I once you submit them, it's gone. And I don't even remember where I put this video because I did record it. <laughs> I recorded it as I was doing it. And I'm sorry, I don't have a video anymore. I don't know where it is. <laughs> it's lost in the documents. But um it will give you the instructions on which document to upload so you know exactly what you're uploading, which I think is really awesome. So you will need a translated marriage certificate in English. This is something else you want to do while you're there. You need to have the marriage license translated to English uh, because they will need a copy of that. So going back to this list, you will need the I-130 form. You will need the filing fee of $535, however you're going to pay that. 
uh, you need the I-130A so, uh, the beneficiary form. You will need a, these two, well, this one is questionable because I don't remember uploading his birth certificate. I actually don't even show it in the documents. So I think this is just for the um, NDC stage, which is also known as the National Visa Center stage, which is another process, which I'll talk all about later. <laughs> These can be copies. It doesn't have to be the original. So you will need the petitioner's birth certificate. Well, I'm sorry. You will need the petitioner's birth certificate. That's ours. Um, a copy of our passport. You will need a divorce judgment, the petitioner's divorce judgment if you've been married and divorced. A copy of the marriage certificate in English. A copy of the original marriage certificate in Arabic a copy of translated uh, beneficiaries birth certificate in English and a copy of their original birth certificate in Arabic. Now these are the two that I did not upload. I, I didn't see the option for them or maybe I don't recall uploading them but they're not in my uploaded documents. So I'm assuming that it wasn't necessary yet but it will be necessary at the next stage which is the National Visa Center stage as I mentioned. Um, so you will need a petitioner and the beneficiary, them. You will need a passport photo, which I talked about. It does have to be a white background and it does need to be uh, the dimensions that they ask for. They won't accept it. And you, this is where you have to prove your relationship, which is really important. <laughs> so uh, that's the last thing you need is proof of bona fide relationship. Basically, you have to prove that you're in a real relationship. So I went all the way back to our beginning of our relationship and our messages. I uploaded at least 20 to 25 pages. You don't want to do too many. Some people get kind of crazy with this, but I think it is necessary to at least do 20 pages of proving your relationship. So we had affidavits from my friend, his mom, his brother, things like that. You want to get family members that are witnessing your relationship and that can prove that you're together. Um, I think some people mentioned that it had to be notarized, but I did not. I don't think it has to be notarized or anything like that. Uh, so you want, you want evidence, basically. Anything that you can prove that you were there. I uploaded uh, receipts from Airbnb. I uploaded the consulate information that I uploaded anything that was happening while I was there, our boarding pass, my passport photo, uh, the back of it where they stamp it, um, many other things. But the biggest part is the pictures. So there was collages that I made that looked like this. So you want to upload anything that can prove you are in a relationship. I uploaded pictures with our mom, his mom, his sister, anything that could prove that we were together and that we have had a relationship for the last two years. Um, anything that could prove we were in a solid relationship that I felt was necessary. I made a collage about it and uploaded it. And I'm not gonna show you guys our conversations, but <laughs> you definitely wanna go back to the beginning of the relationship because I have heard that in the interview stage, which comes later in Morocco when they get through the visa stage, they have been asking people for um, information or proof of their relationship in the beginning. So people are forgetting to upload the beginning of their relationship and then they're having to give that proof later on. So this is definitely important that you put information about the beginning of your relationship. Super, super important because I, I have seen people get held up in this situation. And so if you choose to mail it in, um, I will have to figure out if the address has changed, but I'm pretty sure it's the same. It's, a, and it is, it's on the uh, information in the description box. There will be a link for that photo that just shows if you mail it in, this is the sheet that you want to put in the front of it. And it's uh, P.O. Box 21700, that's in Phoenix, Arizona, 85036. And now there is another process.
process that you could do. We actually did uh, file the, for the K-3, which is a whole other situation. <laughs> Uh, it, it was basically like sending in these documents, but um, it is called the I-129F petition. And basically what was happening was people were filing this in order to move their case forward. And it was working for some people, but it does not work for everybody. It hasn't worked for us, so I'm not even going to really talk about that. But I did file this. They don't approve the K-3 visas much anymore. So what was happening is people were getting those or filing for that petition and then they would deny it and then they would approve the I-130 once they found out it was in the system. Now, and usually that was taking people not even six months, which you can do it if you want. It's free. Uh, it doesn't hurt to do it, which I'll also post that in the description box. But I'm just saying it hasn't worked for us. Uh, it didn't make anything quicker or anything so you know to each its own if you want to do that it is another step of sending in documents sending it to the right place I will you know send that I'll put that information below but um, just keep in mind that it may or may not work and just not to get your hopes up which is what, exactly what I did I filed this in December and I was really excited thinking I was going to speed things up and now both our petitions are in the same office <laughs> sitting there so um which mind mind you there's thousands of us trying to get our petitions uh taken care of and there's only five centers here only five so there's hundreds and thousands of people trying to get their spouses or girlfriends or whatever over here and it's just not enough it's not enough centers, and it, it really makes me upset because there's also no order of how these are being taken care of. It's definitely not first come, first serve. You see people filing their petitions, getting approved in four months, and they're way later. You know, there's people that have been waiting two years for this to go through, and then there's people who get lucky or, you know, whatever their situation. I'm not hating. It's just don't go into this expecting that your, your situation is going to happen to someone else's. I can't stress that enough because... First of all, the marriage process is nothing like anybody else's. And then this process is also nothing like anybody else's. So you want to go in with an open mind and understand that you're going to be waiting regardless. And this is the hardest part is waiting. Um, so you definitely have to understand that you are going to be waiting. So in a nutshell, this situation could be very overwhelming. So like I said, if you're not married yet, please just focus on the marriage process and then come back to this process, which is the first step to getting your spouse here. Uh, there is, right after this, the embassy stage, which I will also post about when we get there. <laughs> and inshallah, that'll be soon. And I, I know this is complicated, but hopefully this will help some of you guys get through the process with having the links in one spot. Uh, but it is also time consuming and you're fighting for your spouse, so it's a fight <laughs> it's a fight for them and as long as you go into it knowing and being prepared that there's a processing time for each center like the one we're at it's a processing time of 12 months so I went into this already knowing that it was going to take at least 18 months for us to be together in the United States anyway um, I will go over there uh, inshallah but just if you can go into it not expecting it to be as quick as you want it to be, then you just understand you have to go on with your life and do what you have to do for now until you guys can be uh, reunited again. And this is ultimately the hardest part because once they approve it, it should take about, from what I've seen, it's taken about four months from the approval to the NBC stage. But then you have, you know, I don't want to skip ahead because you got to focus on one thing at a time so you don't get overwhelmed. And I hope this does help you guys. Uh, make sure you come back for the next video, which hopefully, inshallah, will be the NBC stage soon. And if not, I'll find something else to talk about. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a good day.